Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Elpis Astrology at elpisastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So this is my take on the astrology for 2024. I'm going to give you sort of a high level overview for each of the months and generally speaking for the year. I will go into the sun signs and ascendants towards the end, but you can always check in on the chapters yourself uh, that are listed below as well as in the timestamps as well. So for 2024, actually the most significant thing, uh, especially in the US of A, is not necessarily the, the, um, the astrology. <laughs> It's actually an election year, a uh, presidential election year for 2024, culminating uh, at the election on the 5th of November, 2024. Now I'll cover it a little bit more when I get into the month of November, but notably we have Mars will be opposite Pluto at this time. So we can expect some uh, potential big egos uh, out there. And I guess that's not gonna be unusual, right? So this uh, next part of my video, I'm gonna talk about just the general all over overarching types of things that are going to be happening astrologically before I get into like the months and the details of them. So one of the first biggest things that's going to happen uh, in Jan on January 1st, Pacific time, is that Mercury will go direct at 22 degrees of Sagittarius. But it's important to remember that it's going direct at that degree. In November, there will be another Mercury retrograde and it will go retrograde at that. So that um, degree point of 22 degrees for various reasons, which I'll get into in the details, is going to be important. If you've got that in your chart, pay attention to what house it's in. There's going to be some stuff that goes on for the whole of 2024 that affects you. Speaking of other Mercury retrogrades, there's two other ones. We've got a Mercury retrograde that's going to be in Aries. The same month that Aries, you actually have an eclipse, total new moon eclipse at 19 degrees. So that's, and it's all going to occur in uh, Aries and it's all going to occur in April. So that's an important time of considering new starts and pioneering new pla uh, plans and paths for yourself, generally speaking. And the other Mercury retrograde that's going to happen starts in Virgo in August, but then ends up around 21 degrees of Leo. So both those signs, especially you Virgo, because Mercury rules your sign, is going to be important for you to go back and looking at important details, right, for yourself um, during that time period of August. But Leo will be affected too, because of course that uh, whole Mercury retrograde will go direct at 21 degrees of Leo. So that's another important uh, Mercury retrograde, three of them this year. We've also got, I already talked about the um, eclipse that's happening in April at 19 degrees towards the end of April in Aries. But also in April, we have Jupiter conjunct Taurus, I mean, conjunct Uranus in Taurus, and it's going to be at 22 degrees of Taurus around April as well. But realistically, uh, both Jupiter and Uranus will be conjunct uh, very, very close together, most of April and actually parts of May too. So those are also uh, two months that are going to be important for us to be involved in some unexpected things coming our way that maybe help us break out of a rut. Big or small ruts doesn't really matter. Most affected, of course, is going to be Taurians and then um, the opposite sign of Scorpio too, where your partners may be brought in more. Um, the eclipses, like I said, continue in both Libra as well as Aries. Um, I'll discuss those in the monthly um, part of this video. But the other big thing in terms of eclipses is in September, 7th, the 17th of September, we will have our first eclipse that's not in Aries or Libra. It's going to be at 25 degrees of Pisces. And this kicks off us um, understanding that the transiting north nodes are going to be changing soon. Not in September, but in the second half of January 2025. And this eclipse on the 17th of September at 25 degrees Pisces is important because it's going to bring some things to light, uh, probably in a big way, if you've got anything around those degrees. So let's take 24, 25, 26 degrees of Pisces. You can bet that the following uh, January 2025 for 18 months, that area of your life is going to be lit up and affected. But Pisces in particular is going to be affected because, of course, that eclipse is going to be very closely to conjuncting Neptune that's still in 
uh, Pisces itself along with um, Saturn. All right, that's just a really general overview. I'm now going to get into the individual months and some of the aspects that are happening at that time. All right, so starting off with January, literally on the 1st of Jan, we have that Mercury that was going retrograde in December 2023. We'll now go direct at 22 degrees of Sagittarius. And, you know, Sagittarius is a very hopeful sign. And so I, I just saw this as a standalone to be very hopeful. Now, we still have to have uh, Mercury come out of the shadow period and go back into Capricorn, right around the eight degree of Capricorn. That's not going to really happen till um, about the 21st, 22nd of January. It'll be officially out of uh, shadow period. But the other thing that we have happening in January that I thought was noteworthy was the fact that, I mean, we all know that Pluto is basically in Aquarius, but that 2024 is the very last year that Pluto will um, kind of go back into the last degrees of Capricorn. But in January, we will have a sun at zero degrees of Aquarius conjunct Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. And so that's going to be a very, very important time period. It is around that 21st, 22nd time period too, when we have um, Mercury going out of shadow. So I would expect some kind of significant um, Significant effect from the standpoint of probably the world leaders and some something that tells us that there is a definite shift with regards to power and how it's being used. Um, yeah, I, I, I will cover January as well in more detail in my January video. The other thing that happens is, and it usually does happen around this time of year, is Uranus will be going direct. So I see that as significant too. Now that Uranus going direct in January may actually give us a lot of impetus to break free of something. And maybe that break, I mean, Uranus does, is the modern ruler of Aquarius. So maybe that's going to be a time, the month of January, where we see significant change with regards to, um, you know, more, um, more things being given to the people, uh, a more, even playground with regards to, you know, what everyone's going to be able to access, healthcare, uh, anything along that line, and just being treated well, that everyone's being treated well, right? Lots of humanitarian type things may be going on too. Um, but it really is giving power back to the people. And so, you know, sometimes this can turn out where, you know, there's going to be certain entrenched political parties um, ousted and, um, you know, the people decide to make the changes, right? All right, so that's January. We move on to February. And um, the 9th of February, we have uh, a new moon at 20 degrees of Aquarius. Now, although this isn't going to be doing anything directly with Pluto, it is a new moon in Aquarius where Pluto is going to habit pretty soon, basically in November. 2024 for 20 years. So I saw this new moon as probably something significant because it also opposes Uranus, which is now direct, and that is one of its rulers. So I would expect something significant of new that's going to happen around that new moon. And if you individually have something, say, around the 20 degree mark of Aquarius, you can expect some unexpected new beginning here. And at that same time, the north nodes are going to be conjuncting Chiron. And so this says from a collective level to me, great healing for our future destiny. Um, we're going to have Pluto uh, for most of February 2024 at zero degrees of Aquarius. And, you know, right the way the beginning and into the first half of February, we're going to have that whole zero degrees of Aquarius and Pluto being aspected by the inner planets. First of all, it's going to be Mercury. So that says some kind of powerful message will be given. I mean, it could also be translated into because, you know, that whole Aquarius can represent some kind of electronic type things, uh, even scientific things. It could be some big announcement that happens here in February um, the, of significance, right? And then we have Mars is going to be conjuncting Pluto at zero degrees 
followed by sort of mid-February Venus conjunct. Now, we can also speak to things like um, maybe new kind of currencies. I mean, we know we've got different types of ways we can, you know, deal with money or, or exchange money itself. But this could represent some real um, tangible things happening with regards to the power of our money. Maybe there will be new um, currencies or equivalents of currencies that come at this time. No longer uh, the world basing everything on the US dollar. There may be some changes with regards to that that happens here. But certainly um, this is just supporting um, that whole January 2021st time period where we had the Sun conjunct Pluto. We just have then these planets, Mercury, Mars, and Venus conjuncting that same point, uh, and of course conjuncting Pluto. So I see February as probably one of the more significant months with regards to uh, actual change that is tangible that we can see, that's truly gonna be supporting the people, right? Now, what may also at this time, we may have an emergence of different groups because that's another Aquarius thing is, you know, our, our groups that we belong to, right? Um, and the idea is, is that um, no one's elevated to uh, a position of power within the group. When we talk about Aquarius, everyone's supposed to be similar, right? But I think in the end, we, we contribute, all its individuals will contribute something to the group. I did do a video on Pluto in Aquarius. I'm not going to get into too much of that right now, but check out my video. I'll put the link below. I do go into all the uh, sun signs and ascendants, so it might be worth your while checking out what area of your life, right? We're going to have, you're going to have Pluto. Um, operating from a transformational standpoint for 20 years, certainly starting officially in November 2024. All right, in March, we have our first eclipse. It's going to be really towards the end of March, and it will be at five degrees of uh, Libra. We'll also have uh, Venus will be opposing Saturn, and we'll also have uh, Mars squaring Uranus. So there could be some things come to a big conclusion here of some sort uh, with regards to what? Well, in, in an individual uh, standpoint, you know, Libra can represent things that are diplomatic. It can represent relationships, the law, that type of thing. Uh, seeking harmony could be something that is um, relevant at this point. We could see some breakups of some relationships, certainly with the Venus um, conjunct Saturn, we were really looking at things have to be real with regards to anything in the love area, right? But Venus also rules our money. So there could be some new rules and regulations in March that are formed around our money systems that are put into effect. Um, if this is in your individual chart, this certainly could mean that you got to take your money more seriously. But for others, it could just say that you take the value of yourself more seriously, or that maybe even at its best, we could see uh, those, those above you, your superiors, um, saying that I value, I value who you are and giving you some recognition. Now, the Mars square Uranus just means fractious energy here, that it's almost like, you know, things popping out of the woodwork. Um, so it could be something along that line in March where we see disagreements. And like I mentioned earlier, this is an election year. So there will be something happening in March with regards to the election as well. It just may be, as I said, things popping out, this energy popping out that says, see me, see me, see me, right? Now we look at April, we have another eclipse. And this is a more significant one from the standpoint of that it's a, a total eclipse. It's a new moon at 19 degrees of Aries on the 8th of April. Now, the other thing that goes with this whole eclipse is the fact that we've got a Mercury retrograde happening in Aries. And this particular Mercury retrograde does stay in the sign of Aries. So really, if you've got any sort of major placements around Aries, you're probably going to be affected in some way in April, and not necessarily in a bad way, you really have to look at your individual chart. It's a new moon eclipse, so that's positive. Um, and it just generally speaking in Aries initiates things, right? When we when we talk about Aries and an eclipse, generally speaking, depending where this is in your chart, 
uh, will indicate, you know, what new beginning you're going to have. And when you have a total eclipse, there could be some, if you've got something around the 19 degree mark of Aries, or maybe the opposite sign of Libra, um, something unexpected comes in, whoosh, like this big breath of fresh air to give you some new beginning and maybe help some folks um, express their individual um, need to be on their own path, right? Um, yeah, so that Mercury retrograde we spoke about um, will be at 27 degrees of Aries. We're also going to have other things happening here too. We will have on the 25th of April that Mercury will go direct at 15 degrees of Aries. So we're looking at the 15 to 27 degrees of Aries for the Mercury retrograde, right? We have uh, Jupiter, uh, notably, will be conjunct Uranus at 22 degrees of Taurus around the 25th of April. But honestly, if you look at an ephemeris, you'll see that Jupiter and Uranus are close in orb of conjunction, not only the whole month of April, but also into May. But if we pick out a particular day where they are exactly conjunct, we're looking at around the 25th of April. So see if you've got anything at 22 degrees of Taurus. And um, I did a video on this too. I'll put that link below. I cover all the ascendants and sun signs too in that video. But April could also be another really significant month, really for, I would say, big breakthroughs and new starts. Uh, and again, look to, first of all, where you've got Aries, but then also look where you've got Taurus at 22 degrees with that whole Jupiter conjunct Uranus, right? Not have any major effects, as I always say. You really have to have something very close to these degree points that I'm discussing here, right? We also have Venus conjunct the North Nodes, and I really like that. So that puts, to me, uh, potentially an emphasis again on our money. It could put an emphasis on um, relationships, and it could put, especially if it aspects something in your chart, if it does, maybe you're going to get on a new destiny path with regards to relationships and or our values, right? And especially value of ourself. So there may even just be some discussions that go on with the whole effect of Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius asking us to, you know, treat everybody um, as equal. This could have discussions going on with regards to how we need to do that. And as a collective, get on our destiny path here where we do value each individual. Also in April, we will have Mars conjunct Saturn. That's on the 9th of April. And then Mars also will be the same month conjunct Neptune on the 29th of April. So these are all big activations. Mars likes to activate things, right? And so Mars conjunct um, Saturn, first of all, it can put a delay on something where, you know, the law or the laws or someone in power says, no, stop, you can't go forward right now. And then when we've got Mars conjunct Neptune, you know, that can bring in elements, especially on a collective level of um, fogginess, um, deceit, um, hiding things, that sort of thing. So that's around the end of April. You can have this going on. And I think we're going to probably see this playing out more in the collective, maybe with things around the election, where people are hiding things or have been hiding things, and then that all comes out into the open. Yeah, so that could actually happen too in April. So looks like a pretty packed month in April too, especially for breaking free and getting on a new path with regards to you being an individual. When we look at May, we've got a full moon at two degrees of Sagittarius. Pluto will be going retrograde, but it'll stay at around that two degree um, Aquarius mark. And it will be uh, sextiling the sun. Uh, the sun will be trining Pluto. We have uh, the sun going to be conjunct uh, Uranus in May. And also in May, around the fourth week of May, we're going to have Jupiter ingress or go into Gemini for a year. And that's going to be exciting, right? And I also did a video on this, <laughs> so I'll put the link below for that one as well. 
But really Jupiter in Gemini is going to put a bigger spotlight on any kind of communications, essentially. Now, I guess you could say that um, things like AI, it, it's already big discussions about that. But as I dip my toe more into that too, it's like, wow, there's a lot of things surrounding it. So I think there's going to be big discussions going on in that area. There could be uh, new breakthroughs with regards to any kind of communication systems. And I guess when we think about it, we use things like the internet a lot, right? Maybe there's going to be a new version or upgrade of some sort that's going to be significant for us. Um, Jupiter, as its, as its own standalone, can represent uh, foreign people and foreign things. So there may be a lot more discussions um, and uh, talk about foreign things in that month of May too, throughout the year till May 2025. When we look at June, um, with Jupiter now in um, Gemini, it will be trining. Pluto in Aquarius. And so there may be some, some significant transformation here of some either communications that are out there regarding foreign people, foreign lands, or just some kind of major upgrade, like I said, a transformation of some sort with regards to our communication systems. We will have Venus sextile Mars. Um, and here we're talking about, of course, the influence of both Cancer and um, Taurus here. So these are lovely energies if you've got anything um, around that Cancer degree. This could bring in some opportunities for relationships, but it can also bring in some opportunities for friendships too, and also sort of collaborative working together. You know, we're looking at both Cancer and Taurus here as signs as part of the sextile. And so when we talk about cancer, we're talking about um, certainly anything to do with nurturing. And then, of course, Taurus is all about potentially the land. It's um, our money systems. So that's the other thing with the Venus part, especially. It could be our homeland takes on some new initiative with regards to our money systems in June. And that actually occurs around the end of June, 28th of June. And then Venus uh, will be opposite the full moon in Capricorn on the 6th of June. So, and conjunct the sun. So I think that this month of June may bring some highlight here with regards to the money systems that we're talking about. For others, depending if you've got anything around this degree point, it may bring up some new relationship for you or end a relationship for you. It could go either way, right? You've got the mix of June of potential starting new relationships, opportunities for that, but then also at the full moon, which is really early on, that's on the 6th of June, there could be some decision of ending some relationships here too. But I think on a collective level, this is all about our money. Money and communication systems, communication systems getting a, an upgrade of some sort in June. All right, when we look at July, we have the sun opposite Pluto on the 23rd of July. And so this is really power struggles. And I think this will translate on a collective level back to the whole election process through 2024, leading up to November, right? Um, just fractious energy of people in power saying, no, I'm more important, that type of thing. Now when we look at the new moon in July, that's gonna be at 14 degrees of Cancer. So that could be also significant for folks that have anything around that 14 degree mark, especially for Cancer rising, a whole new start for you, right? Um, and I actually, have, I actually happen to have my ascendant at 14 degrees of Cancer. So keep an eye out for me guys for July. Uh, we will have the Sun conjunct Venus on the 1st of July. I think that's really beautiful as well. We have a full moon at 29 degrees of Capricorn, sextile Neptune, uh, exactly. So that is also going to be significant for July as well as that full moon. And I think that's gonna mark a tie up 
uh, with regards to the whole Pluto being in Capricorn too this year, 2024. So I think, again, this is going to see some endings of political either parties or governments that are the old guard that need to go. And that's also going to be up uh, here in July as well. And we're going to have Venus opposite Pluto too on the 13th of July. This, I think, is going to be another tie-in with our money. Um, maybe there's going to be some major shift with regards to um, how those in power controlling our money um, are going to have to change. And maybe that's going to equate into our bank systems. I'm not a, um, a financial astrologer. There's lots of good ones out there. I'm just kind of reading how I would read astrology, generally speaking. We're going to have Mercury and Venus, though. We'll be trying in the North Nodes, and then they'll try in Chiron uh, in, in July as well. And so this is, I think, pleasant, pleasant pleasantries. <laughs> you know, people speaking nicely, um, people being charming, that type of thing. Uh, people talking about where do we need to go here with regards to our collective destiny? Where do we need to heal? Now, it could also have, if, you know, things I'm hearing, rumblings of other type of respiratory uh, diseases coming into play, if those transmit again on a worldwide level, this could have us talking about, in a favorable way, how to cope with that in July. But it's a trine. So I would say this is all positive energy, right? Now in August, we have a new moon at 12 degrees of Leo. And of course, we must remember that if we go back, dial back to 2023, we had in early September, that Venus retrograde that we had ongoing throughout the summer in Leo went direct at 12 degrees. So for those folks that were affected by this, uh, the Venus retrograde at 12 degrees, this new moon is your new start for that. And certainly if you are, say, a Leo ascendant and you've got something at 12 degrees, or your ascendant, rather, is at 12 degrees of Leo, this is a whole new start for the whole year. Um, but this is a new start in relationships, so there may be some folks that, you know, went through some kind of transition uh, in September 2023, and then in August... Maybe some folks will get engaged. Some folks will get married. It's a traditional month for marriage too. We're going to have um, a start of a Mercury retrograde in August, and it will be starting off um, on the 5th of August at 4 Virgo. But it's going to go direct at 21 degrees of Leo on the 28th of August. So we've got two signs being covered here in August. So Virgo as well as Leo need to pay attention to um, maybe reviewing something, depending where you have either Virgo or Leo in your chart. You may have to go back and uh, take a look at things, uh, perhaps with regards to how you've been communicating or communications given to you can, can represent writing as well. We have Mars conjunct Jupiter on the 14th of August. That's absolutely lovely. That's going to give, and it's in um, Jupiter being in um, Gemini. Um, I think this could be a time when there's some big initiative with regards to maybe some scientific breakthrough of some sort, you know, where we get news of that. And again, this may also be tied in with uh, any of our AI type things, any kind of communication systems. Um, with Mars putting energy into it, it could be um, literally new, new communication systems being put into uh, some overseas countries that gives us a, a bigger spotlight on what's going on over there. We end the month on the 30th with Venus, lovely trine with Pluto. That's fantastic. So this can bring in some very transformational love energies here, right? But it can also bring in some big transformation with regards to your money as well, in a very positive way, right? Because it's a trine. Now in September, um, We've got a new moon uh, at 11 degrees of Virgo on the 3rd, and it's going to be opposite Saturn. Remember, Saturn is in Pisces at this time. So this could just mean, really, these are people wanting to exert their authority. That's the Saturn part um, with that new moon. So 
you know, it just may have some individuals here saying, I'm in the right, I know the rules and the regulations here, and trying to bring out some facts. Hopefully this is a, a helpful thing for us too, right? Again, we go back to things happening regarding the lead up to the actual election will still be going on in September too. Now, what's interesting in September for me is that we're going to have the start of eclipses in Pisces uh, for this year, and then next year we'll have one in the opposite sign of Virgo. But this is our clue to the fact that we're going to be having a change of the North Nodes, right? Because eclipses happen as a result of the involvement of the North Nodes and or the South Nodes. So in this case, we have um, the North Nodes being affected because the full moon eclipse is going to be at 25 degrees of Pisces. The actual nodes themselves, the transiting nodes, will not go into Pisces until 2025. That's January 20, sort of mid-month January 2025. So it really doesn't fall into this year. But this is a little heads up for us. So it's a full moon eclipse uh, at 25 degrees of Pisces. So check to see where you've got 25 degrees of Pisces in your chart. Because this could be an activation area that's really going to start in full force starting in January 2025 for about 18 months. And that's around the 18th of September, that full moon eclipse in Pisces. We have Mercury squaring Uranus this month of September. And so this is really, you know, messages, communications go awry. I mean, if you think of it, Uranus is kind of the higher octave of um, uh, Mercury here. So there could be some major breakdowns of communication systems. They maybe go down for some reason. Or difficulties getting um, maybe major different internet type things or to internet related things working properly because there's some big challenges with regards to it. We have the Sun opposite Saturn here too. And so this could actually see in September um, I'm thinking maybe some facts come to life because there's a big influence of Virgo here in September that um, challenge some of those people that are in power and maybe some people stepping down here that had some kind of power or did some kind of rules and regulations. I'm think I wonder if it's going to be the uh, in the USA anyway, um, the Supreme Court or something like that. Uh, where somebody is challenged and they may have to step down in September. Okay, we'll have to see about that. We're also going to have the sun here squaring Jupiter. And you know, it's really hard to get a, a bad aspect of with Jupiter. You got to work pretty hard for that. But this could bring in some exaggeration from those who already have big egos. <laughs> Um, I've not put the degree points down here, but, but know that, you know, in my monthly videos, I will give you all that as well. Uh, nicely, though, we're going to have Venus uh, trine uh, Jupiter on the 15th of September, and that's beautiful. These are the two benefics. This is a, just mark that as a really pleasant day where really good things could happen for you. When we look at Pluto, Pluto is now going to be kind of stationing and staying at that 29 degrees of Capricorn right the way through uh, parts of November before it finally sits in to zero degrees of Aquarius and stays there for 20 years or so. So this is also a tie up, you know, that 29 degree is called an anoretic degree. It really just means that it's this big culmination of energies for that final push of what? To really see the end of political power that is no longer of use to us. So there may be some big upsets here, um, not only in September, but right the way through the first part of November too, in that regard. In October, we are going to have a new moon at 10 degrees of Libra conjunct Mercury. And that's on the 2nd of October. Well, this is just gonna bring in my mind in if whatever uh, fractious stuff has been happening prior to this new moon, um, this is going to bring in some real peace, some real harmony. Uh, diplomacy will be working at its highest and its best. The full moon is going to be at 24 degrees of Aries. And that's going to be on the 17th of October. And it will be squaring Mars, its ruler. 
So generally speaking, this full moon could just bring in some challenges, if, especially if you've got something around that 24 degree of Aries. Challenges to what? To move forward, basically, um, to make changes. So it's the squaring the ruler of Aries, Mars. So that's, that's going to be some challenges around that full moon. And when we look at the sun, it will be squaring Pluto on the 22nd. And that's also going to bring, again, these ego energies into light, right? And um, cause some challenges for us. I think this is more from a collective standpoint. You know, people standing up saying, I'm in the right, um, or I've got the power. And, um, you know, the ego is getting out there. Now, we're going to have Mars also trying Neptune, so it's not going to be... Um, square or conjunct Neptune is going to be trying. So this is really bringing some hope and inspiration uh, into October for us, right? And then uh, we're also going to have Venus square, um, the Saturn part of it here too. So that's going to just also bring challenges into our money systems. Maybe there's going to be some blip that happens on the stock market at that time where we've got to take accountability for where are we going here with our money or we're being asked to be more accountable with regards to our money, say on an individual level. For others, it can bring in some challenges with relationships. I've not got the degree points here. Again, I'll put that into my monthlies when I put my videos up for each of the individual months. So when we go into November, November is, the November 5th, 2024, is the presidential election, the formal day that happens. And so we're going to have what? We're going to have a new moon on the 1st, and that will be at 9 degrees of Scorpio. I see that as a relatively, you know, good thing. Um, it, it precedes the actual election. So let's hope that brings in some new things with regards to not only the presidential election going well, um, but also in regards to our money systems too. So that whole Scorpio Taurus axis can also represent our monies here. That day we're going to have the Sun trine Saturn. That's excellent too. Maybe there's going to be agreement for those that have, you know, that control our money systems. Maybe there's going to be some positive news of some sort. That would be awesome. Uh, what else do we have happening here? We've got the full moon at 24 degrees of Taurus. And it will be sextiling Saturn at this time as well. So I think November, apart from the uh, probably antics around the presidential election on the 5th, I think this is going to be a money month, uh, money systems month, um, banks, the Fed and the USA, all that activity is going to be, I think, around those areas uh, as well. We have Venus squaring Neptune. So this could be, you know, uh, some kind of, uh, revelation with regards to smoke and mirrors or confusion around money or money systems. We're going to have Mars also opposite Pluto at this time. And uh, that could just be aggression. That's what I'm seeing, you know, powerful aggression of some sort happening in November too. Now this could also play out in the political world too, of course, right? A push and pull of power, that opposition. Uh, Venus will be opposite Jupiter. And I don't see that as a negative either. Except that, again, you know, an opposition with Jupiter can bring in, you know, um, exaggeration. So again, it's in, the, it's in the November, the month of November, where the election is. You know, people, I'm getting this image of people pounding their chest, and maybe some of those women are going to be, people are going to be women, because this is Venus, right? Um, but it can also bring in maybe some real uh, not necessarily challenges, but um, discussions, I'm thinking, even though it's not Mercury, around our money systems. And maybe this will also involve some kind of big communications that have to happen, because Jupiter, remember, is in Gemini at that time. Um, we're going to have also the Sun opposite Uranus again. And, of course, this is going to bring in, you know, unexpected events around, uh, I think, you know, that month, I think it's going to affect the whole month, that whole sun opposite Uranus. And it's going to bring, bring in unexpected events um, around those people um, that may be 
I'm thinking there's some subversive stuff going on here with that whole lineup. Let me just look up to see exactly when um, the sun is going to be opposite Uranus uh, in November uh, 2024. Just give me a, give me a minute here, guys. Um, yeah. So we're looking at around uh, the 17th of November 2024. So, you know, the, the counting the ballots and all that is certainly going to be going on around that point, but I think there's going to be some challenges. Um, unexpected things popping out around that November. Um, but it could also bring in uh, something to light, uh, some communications, because Jupiter's in Gemini uh, regarding, again, foreign countries of some sort here, right? All right, when we go into December, um, we have, first of all, Pluto will be going direct. We are going to have a new moon in Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, listen up. You've got in 2024, you know, new beginnings for yourself. And especially if you have something around nine degrees of Sagittarius, these are going to be new beginnings, but they won't come without some kind of consideration especially at this new moon on the 2nd of December at 9 Sagittarius, because it will be squaring uh, that whole Saturn in Pisces. And this could just mean a challenge for you to start these new beginnings that you want to get on with. Maybe you've got to just check a few boxes here and maybe check in with people in authority before you can move forward with that new start, wherever this falls in your chart, right? We have Mars going retrograde also in December, and it's going to go retrograde at six degrees of Leo. So certainly check to see what you might have around that six degree mark of Leo. It won't cover the same geography as the Venus retrograde in Leo. We also are going to have Venus conjunct Pluto. Well, these are like transformational love connections could happen at this time. But this will be for a second time, right? We already talked about in February, the inner planets, right? That move very quickly. We had Venus conjunct Pluto at that time too. So this is the second time here that uh, Venus could conjunct Pluto. And if we take it to sort of like an individual level, it could just be some people uh, decide to take whatever major connection, love connection they had at that time and, and maybe it goes to the next step or the next level here. But it can also mean a uh, major transformation, like maybe the final transformation of our money systems, right? Because remember at this time, Pluto will be in Aquarius along with Venus in Aquarius. This will not be a Capricorn thing. So some kind of, um, I'm thinking more, you know, money being distributed to the people. I mean, we'll have to see how that pans out, I guess. But because Aquarius is involved here, right? Some kind of people, the people in power, um, giving li literally power to the people, but it's in connection with their money. We're going to have the full moon at 23 degrees of Gemini, and that will be squaring Neptune too here. This is just going to bring in um, some challenges with regards to any kind of communications. So if you've got something at 23 degrees of Gemini, you know, know that the heads up here is there's going to be some confusion and more than likely that confusion is going to be around communication systems, uh, whether that's you talking, even your thinking, right? Your thoughts or writing projects of some sort too. Uh, the new moon is going to be at nine degrees of Capricorn on the 30th. And Venus will be squaring Uranus. So Venus square Uranus around that time of the new moon, again, I think is going to go back to this whole money type thing where there may be another shakeup in money systems. And this could be a worldwide thing that could actually be happening here, right? Um, the new moon at nine degrees of Capricorn just has that one thing. Uh, but certainly for those folks that do have something, say at nine degrees, uh, like your ascendant, this could bring in a whole new start for you if you do have um, your own uh, sun or moon around that nine degrees. This could set up some new start for you for the next year. All right, that kind of wraps up my take for each of the months 
Again, it's at a really high level. I know many of my viewers will know more than me and uh, might want to put some comments in there uh, with regards to maybe something I might have missed. But know that I will get into more detail, including degrees and dates when I do my actual videos for each of those months. So next I'm going to go on to look at either your sun sign and or your ascendant. Whatever resonates with you might be a good idea to maybe listen to both or watch both. Um, and I just wanted to say um, a big thank you and, and a hello to all my Spotify and audio listeners. Man, that, that whole uh, system that I've got going is just taking off due to people really listening to um, all my podcasts. Um, so I want to thank my, my listeners for that too. All right, let's delve into the Ascendants and or your Sun Signs next. All right, so let's go into the individual signs and or Sun Signs. As usual, um, you should go with whatever actually resonates with you, right? I would suggest you actually listen or watch both your ascendant first to see what area of life what I'm talking about uh, is going to affect you and uh, then do your sun sign because the sun is the most important thing in your chart right just to get some more information all right for Leo well Leo you've got a new moon that I picked out for you that's happening um, on the 4th of August at 12 degrees of Leo and what I liked about it was that last year in 2023 the beginning of September we had that whole Venus retrograde go direct at 12 degrees so to me this is conjuncting that point for you and bringing a whole sense of newness so there may be some Leos that marry at this time get engaged at this time um, a child comes into view for you as well because that's very Leo-like too. For others, it might be a great time to start a new business, right? Uh, for still others, maybe some games of chance will, you know, pan out for you in some way. I'm just taking a look here. Yeah, so keep me posted on that. I want to hear from some of those Leos uh, when this time period comes up around the 4th of August at that new moon. But if you do have anything around that 12 degree mark uh, of Leo, this could start a whole new year for you, right? At that uh, 4th of August new moon time period. All right, I'm just looking at some other things here. Um, right, so when we look at that significant um, conjunction with uh, Jupiter conjuncting Uranus, we have that happening um, in whole house signs anyway, in the 10th house. And so that actual conjunction um, will actually take place around uh, the 25th of April time period. So there may be some unexpected shakeup uh, with regards to your career, or your long-term goals, your, your social standing or your reputation. Something may happen at that time. And I'm thinking it, it could be something like one of your bosses or managers or directors exits the scene unexpectedly and you might have to step in and it might be associated later on with the new moon happening right the actual event happens towards the end of august or you're given an opportunity someone approaches you uh, maybe a foreign connection of some sort unexpectedly and says we we'd like to start exploring the possibility of you working with our company uh, that could also happen at that conjunction right in April time period but you'll have a mercury retrograde in April too that will be trining your signs so whatever communications um, either take a backward spin or you have to relook at some maybe writing that you did or communications that you did it's going to be positive for you and it's going to benefit you because it actually is a trine right and certainly that um, full moon or new moon eclipse rather that's going to be happening in Aries at 19 degrees around the 8th of April could also be very beneficial for you right because it forms a trine um, yeah just seeing here yeah so it forms a trine and it involves your ninth house 
And we actually have an involvement here of the Sun. Uh, we have Mercury and we have Venus all in Aries at that time. And it'll be trining your ninth house. So this is forming favorable energies with anybody that you deal with that's a foreign person or foreign place. If you are in higher education, this could be some positive development for you. Positive communications. Um, and anything to do with sort of, you know, if we, we think about legal things, could also be represented here too, right? That's very much a ninth house um, area. But it could be just that you're communicating about taking this fabulous trip, or you communicate with others about this wonderful trip that you've gone on. And that's the ninth house involvement, right? But that's all kind of around that time period in April, uh, this positive trine that's going to be happening and beaming to your ninth house. The previous um, full moon eclipse, it's at five Libra. That'll be sextiling uh, your sign in March, towards the end of March, and it'll be sextiling your third house. So this brings in opportunities for communications. It brings in opportunities for short uh, distance travels. It brings in opportunities to maybe do some writing, some serious writing of some sort, uh, especially if it applies to anything to do with diplomacy or, or the law, that type of thing too, right? Yeah, I mean, that whole eclipse that's happening um, on the 25th of uh, April at 19 Aries, if you've got something, Leo, around the 19, like 18 to say 20, 21 degree mark uh, of Leo and, and or Aries for that matter, um, this could be a whole new start for you. Some Leos may actually be making the decision to move overseas, that type of thing. That's a total eclipse, new moon, new start. It's you initiating new things. Um, the ninth house is also meaning in life. So for those, you know, more developed Leos, this could have you identifying in April some whole new thing that comes into your life that gives you meaning. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, so you also have... Um, a retrograde involvement, right? So in August, we have Mercury going uh, retrograde, starts off in Virgo, but it does go direct again around the 21 degree mark uh, of Leo. So say you've got your ascendant or something like that around 21 degrees of Leo. When that Mercury goes direct, whatever confusion you had, whether it's to do with communications, writing, presenting, even short travel around, maybe even your siblings or neighbors, that should be gradually cleared up towards the end of August when Mercury conjunct potentially your ascendant uh, at 21 degrees or your sun, um, things start to get cleared up, right? Yeah, I mean, the other significant thing that's happening towards the end of the year is you're going to have a Mars go retrograde in Leo. And it starts, uh, it actually starts in, um, well, it's the November, uh, December time period we have Mars in Leo. Uh, but it's not till the 6th of December that Mars itself in Leo goes retrograde at 6 degrees. And so I would say look to anything that you might have, say, around that 6 degree mark, because the end of December could mark a time period where, let's just say it's your uh, ascendant. Mars going retrograde means energy is going to be stopped in terms of whatever initiative you want to take and move forward with. Um, and Mars retrograde stays for quite some time. Um, I'll be covering that more in my 2025 um, video. But know that it starts officially in December, the retrograde itself at 6. Leo, so anything around that mark. See what house it falls in. If it's your ascendant, it means some delay is going to happen. And there may be frustrations with Mars. You can have some frustrations associated with that too. But with Mars uh, being in Leo, not retrograde in November, I would say if there is some a big project that you have to do or some initiative that you know you're going to have to do, I would not wait till December when Mars does go retrograde to do it. 
So maybe institute those changes or do what you can to put something moving forward in November, uh, knowing that there's going to be some kind of slowdown, potentially, uh, if you're affected by these degrees in the December time period. Now for you, uh, Pluto is going to be in your seventh house of partnerships, whether that's business partnerships, marriage partnerships, clients, and any other, right? And typically we talk about others that we sign contracts with, but it's other people, right? And so that's the area of life that you're going to, you know, have affected. This year in 2024, you may get a heads up on it with regards to some transformational uh, energy with regards to partnerships. So for some folks, you may get married. Um, and enter into this totally transformational time period that's going to last for at least 20 years uh, where all your, your marriage transforms you. For other folks, it could be you enter into a business partnership that totally transforms you and maybe whoever you're making this business partnership with. For others, it might be clients, especially if your business involves dealing with clients. Clients can help transform you in a very positive way here. You could also literally be dealing with people in power as part of your client base. That could also be up here as well. Okay, let me just take one last look here. Yeah. Um, you, have, you do have a new moon eclipse that's happening at 10 degrees of uh, Libra, and that's going to be on the 2nd of October. That sextiles your sign, Leo, in a very positive way. Uh, and it affects your third house. So I see this, let's just let's just say October could be a wonderful month where you get lots of opportunities to speak, to write, to present uh, in a very positive way. And with that whole Leo thing, I see some Leos literally being on a stage somewhere, maybe, you know, presenting a play of some sort. Um, for others, it might be in a business situation. That's a whole new start in that area. It could involve anything Libra, Libra too. So this could involve diplomacy, harmony, literally relationships of some sort, that type of thing. And can actually translate into diplomatic relations could go very well in October at that new moon kicking off the month of October. All right, Leo, take care of yourself. All right, everybody. Um, I'm sure I've missed some things out that uh, my very... Um, apt and able subscribers and viewers and clients uh, will point out to me in the comments and please do that. I'm happy to have it. Um, I did try to take a really good look at 2024, not only for generally speaking the months, but also for you individually. Obviously, I'm going to give you a lot more details uh, as we go through each month and I post my videos. Um, I did mention that I've got uh, two other links here that you could check out, Jupiter going into Gemini. And then, of course, the whole uh, Jupiter conjunct Uranus. I did videos on both those, uh, as well as actually Pluto and Aquarius. And I think you'll really find them useful if you're interested in them. Links are below. Look, everybody, I want you to take care of yourself. We've got a new year, uh, a new start. And um, I'm really feeling optimistic for everybody and sending you lots of love for, um, I hope, a lot of our dreams and wishes coming true in 2024. Please take care and we'll talk to you soon.